love these guys. And as I was preparing for this spiel, I was going through the family album, right? And I was looking at all these memories that we've shared together. These people have been instrumental in multiple points in my life. And I was able to look back, my first trip to Disneyland, look at the slide up here real quick. My first trip to Disneyland, there I am in the middle being held, held, by, mom, held by my mom, and there is Sean and Sherry Brady, just right there with us. There they were, I mean, they were a little overdressed for the occasion, you know, but thank you for sharing my first trip to Disneyland with me. It was excellent. Okay, next, a few years later, I had an opportunity on a Hawaiian Blue Diamond trip, which they call Team Elite trips, to go and swim with the dolphins. And of course, what made it really special was that Catherine and Dean were there with me to share in that moment. So guys, you have been so instrumental in my life. On, on my honeymoon, my wife and I were in Prague and she's sitting there on this railing, a beautiful bridge, and, I, and there was this, this beautiful woman was walking by and saying, hey, can you help us take a picture? And so maybe that was lost in translation because because Maria, instead of taking the picture, she just jumped right in it. But we went for it. This is one of our favorite photos to this day of Maria Graciela joining us on our, on our wedding. And of course, on our big trip around the world, probably the highlight was a boat ride to Capri. And we went, it was, and really what made it special wasn't the time together, the beautiful scenery, it was the fact that Mark Mamrie was there in the boat with us. So, love you guys, thank you so much for being such a great part of my family and of my life, and now we get to share a little bit with everybody else. So, can we give another round of applause to the Brady's? That's why we switched the order of this deal, because that's, that's big news, that's big time. All right. You're buying dinner. But buying dinner for everybody! No, I already gave you that. <laughs> so, my, my first question. Now, Ma Maria has more energy and natural passion for life than all of us put together. So I wanted to start off with you, so that you could really set the tone for us here. We just had an unbelievable event. We're right kind of coming towards the end of it. So what was your takeaway? What did you get from this event? And what could you share with me? Hola. Hola. Como están todos? Muy bien. Oh my God, you really are talking Spanish now, okay? So two years practicing through Zoom, right? Okay, I have so many takeaways, but I need to tell you that after a few years, I decided to build again, and now in the U.S. Hispanic market. So I'm very focused in being effective, and I know that many people is like finding the formula to build fast leadership teams. So me too. <laughs> and uh, in this new digital times, I think that the best advice, I got it from the Gaian panel. Not exactly for what they say, but for what they collectively showed. And what they show is that the system is the same as always. Is just focus every day in sharing the opportunity with a few people. Not one, maybe two, better three, Super good four, five, some said that they share the business with 10 people. It doesn't matter if it's online or offline. The thing is sharing the opportunity. Be intentional. Even though you are connecting through a two-space post, you are finding leaders. What you are looking for is leaders. These people that are ready to change, as just said um, Jeff Mack. So this piece of showing that these ladies, after two months, one of them, the other one took like 10 months, but I remember myself 12 years ago becoming a blue diamond in this same period of month when I really took that decision and focused. So my takeaway is 
Just remember that it doesn't matter if you are selling the product, sharing the cream, you are finding the leaders every day and having conversations about the opportunity always. That's my takeaway. Great. And, and you knew that. You, you knew that before coming to this event, right? This yes. wasn't new knowledge, but what is it about events? So this is for the whole panel that reignites these things in us, right? That was your takeaway, but why did it take coming to an event to get it? What, what happened is that I really feel that every success summit, every event, but particular success summit, made me feel that I'm, I, I was born again. I don't know if it's only because I'm with you guys, because you are so special, your dreams all together, but also because I can connect with the principles. There is, you know, informative events, and there is more inspirational and principles-oriented event, and Success Summit really connect with my best self, connect with the greatness, something that even myself at home every day is difficult to connect. So what I'm taking is all your dreams, all your spirit to be better, to work on you and my truth. My truth is admit what I'm not doing because everyone knows what is not doing. I also know what I'm not doing. But now I am more prepared, I'm stronger to go and do what I have been resistant to do. So this is the, the change that is burning in me. I'm now, I have the faith and I have the strength and I know that I'm not alone building the U.S., building the U.S. because in Zoom I've made a lot of progress and I am online girl, but I needed you and thank you yeah, for being special, for me. There's something special, right, about being in here and in person. Absolutely. Yes. yes. You know, what I've noticed in the last couple of days is that Sherry and I have always committed. We've never missed, in 31 years, we've never missed a convention. We've been to every convention the company has put on. And uh, what I've noticed is a lot of people up on stage here in the last couple of days, a lot of leaders, especially team elites, etc., have said that, you know, when I came to a TEU when, or when I came to a success summit or when I came to some event, you know, it hit me, you know, and I got it and I understood what, what it was and, and blah, blah, blah. But it was coming to that event that allowed them to see something different that they hadn't seen or weren't able to see on a video or whatever. And like Gary said this morning, he came to New Skin five times, you know, he's a bit slow, but uh, he did a great presentation this morning. Jeff did a great presentation talking about freedom. Was Jeff good or what? Yeah. Yeah. We love our Jeff man. But people coming to events, uh, it's, where, it's where leaders you know, wake up and they go, wow, this, this, this is something I can really get my teeth into. And I wanna take that and I wanna push it to Mark here because you said leaders wake up at events. And I've seen that multiple times. I know Jeff was in the back row as frustrated. Oh, sorry, how, is that your spiel? <laughs> so, Mark, I'm going to take this to you. In your journey with New Skin, which has been very long, like very, very long journey with New Skin, very, very long. He's an old guy, right? I were. <laughs> anyway, but uh, we, we were joking that he came into New Skin and I was three years out of diapers, and he's about three years from diapers now <laughs> when I'm hosting him in the Legacy panel. <laughs> I gave him that line, by the way. I he said, did. take this. He did. He gave it. I know you're sweating in that stupid chair. So what, what was it? Use my material. It's okay. <laughs> so what, what is it about events in your journey that has had an impact? Sorry, Mark. Well, first I looked like a drug dealer in that picture of the Capri, so I wish you could take that down. But anyway, um, no, I think, I think what happens here is that we burn hotter when we're together, right? Yes. I mean, if, if the campfire is the campfire, the more logs you put on that baby, the brighter and the hotter it's gonna burn. So that's what these events do. It really gets you burning. True? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is that pretty 
emotional. That was awesome. How was that? That was great. Anybody else? And, and, and was, examples of awesome. people that wake up at events and they just become monsters afterwards. I'm gonna say, I'm, I'm gonna sit here until one of you guys has okay. to say. Okay. Sit here too long. We're gonna have to use the restroom again. So that's. <laughs> <laughs> you want some more answers to that question? Yeah, absolutely. What, what, what are your thoughts, sir? Well, um, sure, like I said, Sherry and I had never missed a convention. And, uh, you know, we've seen, it's where we've seen the heart of the company. It's like we saw Ryan the other night up here, you know, sort of spilling the beans, if you like, you know, and, and, and his passion. Um, I think Jeff just mentioned it a couple of minutes ago. You know, he got up here. You won't see him do what he did up here the other night, it was Thursday night, I think, you know, from your home or from, you know, wherever you might be, unless you're here to see that. You know, he really spoke from the heart and, and just said for the first time. Um, and, you know, I guess as he gets a little older, he gets more mature in the business. He's been there for 25 years, but he gets better at expressing himself, you know, and I think, I think it was one of the best parts of this success summit was watching Steve and Ryan and uh, Jeff egg them on the other day to spill their guts about what they really feel for us. Because you need to know, you really need to know that the company are there for you, that their heart is in it, that their passion and, and Ryan's passion is new skin. I had lunch with him that day and he was just going for it at the lunch, you know, it was just me and him having a chat. I asked him a couple of questions about a few things, and he just went off and started, you know, and, he was, and you could see the passion. And that's who you want running the company. And if you won't see that he, with him sitting in his office and you at home. So it's things like that that you, you'll see when you come to success summits or conventions or, you know, I haven't seen um, uh, Gary DeRitter. This morning I'm sitting in front row here and I'm watching Gary do one of the best presentations I think I've ever seen him do. You know? I mean, he almost looked, he was almost like a Jim Rohn duplicate up here. And, and it was fantastic information, you know? And so you won't see that unless you're willing to come, make the effort. And congratulations to those of you that are here, especially those of you that are here for the first time. I take my hat off to you. Because it's here where you will, you will like Mark said, you'll get that fire burning, you know, and you'll go home. And before we finish today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about you know, what you can do when you go home to keep that fire burning. Yeah, I like that with the logs. Here, go for it. No, no, you. You, you want to say something? Well, you're going to find your journey in this company if you look at it as a process and not an event. I think some people come to this because they think it's going to be quick, right? And that's other things, but you know, the fact is this whole thing's a process and you're just kind of building upon every experience and if nothing else comes out of your experience here, your sense of humor is gonna get so finely tuned, you'll be a comedian. Because you're gonna get experienced in a lot of things and see a lot of crazy people, right? No. The least of which happens to be the least to be shot and I. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Okay, for myself, uh, we came, uh, we landed on last Saturday. And I think one of the highlights of this trip is we was able to visit uh, Jeff and Lee's uh, property house. And uh, that's uh, the most important. So next time if you have a chance to come, spend a couple more days to, you know, looking around. And how do you like to, and, and of course, all of, uh, myself and my wife looking for the house because we're planning to move to your property, Utah. Wow. And guess what? The next day, Jeff called me and said, there are the property next to mine. Do you want to take it? And of course, this property is almost double the size <laughs> than Jeff had. One of my dreams is to become your neighbor, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing that, you know that it, it, it go along with the, the, the price tag, right? And I hear you clear this morning, test your limit. So let me ask my bank about my limit. <laughs> I asked Dean, you want a farm area, you're going to get, a, you get horses and things? He goes, ah, probably a goat. Ah. He's going to have all that land and a goat, single goat. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, Dean, I was his neighbor. Happy in Utah. Yeah. I was just telling Dean, I was their neighbor and I moved. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not talking about the, being a neighbor, your neighbor, Jed, but 
I like what you said about it's a process. And now, and now you said, and then you said it's not an event. But definitely, being a leader takes a process of events. So we need to come to the first event and the next event and the next event. And uh, my, for me, my pivotal event was a System 7 workshop. Because by that time, when I was just one year living in the US, feeling so lonely, out of sort, you know, and also trying to be different than the rest, not finding a job, not finding to uh, work in a uh, external place different than my home, I wanted to be a present home, I just feel really lonely. When I came to the first workshop, and these people that I didn't know shared so generously, showing me a system, I felt part of a community. Wow! I don't know who else feels like this. Immigrants, we used to feel lonely, but you know, this is our family, this is our community. And when you go to the first workshop and the second and the rest and all success summits, you understand that events are taking you and your family with you. So going back to events and how we should go through them, there is another takeaway for me. Antoine Nagoyen said that being called maybe a distributor, he preferred to be called as an event ticket seller. <laughs> yes. Remember that? Oh, he said that he preferred to, prefer to present himself as an event ticket seller, that even as an international distributor. Because if we take people to the events, the event do the work for us. And it's super huge. And just to finish this point, because I think that's super important, my friend Eduardo Rodriguez, I always edify him, he's my brother in this, in this business, he said that he take, takes decisions once in life. And 10 years ago, he decided that he will go to every event. So he don't wonder, I will choose this event and not the other, or if I, will I go to the next event? No, he just bought the ticket in advance. He don't ask about the event, how is the event, what covers the event, when is the event, how much costs the event, in which country is the event. He just goes to every event. So that's my best takeaway, I think. Love it. So we're here, we're getting energized, right? Do we all feel it? The hardest part of this whole deal is when you go home, there's a transition, because you've been here for a few days, you got stuff you gotta do, right? You gotta, and, that, and then what? And I wanna go to Sean with this one, because you, you know, there's always this fall off, I see, after events, so how do you lead people, what, what should they do here to bridge that fall off into being super effective when they come home powered by an event? I think one of the things that uh, helped us take that excitement into the week, because always when you go home, you know, you've got your spouse there often, you've got bills, kids, dogs, problems, headaches, life in your home, you know. When you come here, you leave all that behind. When you go back, you sort of walk back in the front door and you're, you're facing all the, the stuff, you know. I've got eight dogs living in our house, in our bed, you know, in my shower, in my freaking everything I have as a freaking dog, you know? Horses, grandkids, kids, you know, my mother-in-law lives with us. I mean, it doesn't end, you know? <laughs> but when we used to go home to carry on the excitement, and Gary talked about it up here this morning, you have that, that uh, book, okay, what, what is it down there? Okay, Paige is holding it up, okay? So, so, discipline is really the key word I wanted to use here, is discipline. And Nathan Riggs really taught me about discipline. Um, you know, to follow what's in that book, follow the plan. 
and, and do what it suggests in there. And if you've never been someone who does or follows a plan, okay, now's the time to do it. If you want, I think it was Jeff said up here this morning, you know, you know, you've got to become the person who justifies earning that money. Okay? Think about that. And in the early years, as we're talking 30 years ago, I used to think to myself, why aren't I earning the money yet, you know? And I had to physically go through a transformation. My personality had to change. I had to, had to become a different person, someone who liked themselves and then was able to really like and love others. You know, I didn't particularly like myself when I came into the business. I was arrogant. I'd made a lot of money in other businesses and real estate, and I thought I was pretty damn good. And it really was horrible. People didn't want to be around me. I didn't want to be around myself. And I didn't know how to change that. And luckily I married that blonde haired lady down there because she helped me. Isn't she great? Didn't she do a great job last night? She really helped me in doing courses and all that because I wanted to be the best person I possibly could be. And I wanted to be worthy of earning that income. And so I was disciplined, man. I was so disciplined it was like ridiculous. And I learned that from Nathan Riggs. Every morning I'd wake up and every day I would do the same things over and over again, no matter whether I was winning or not, it didn't matter. Whether I was were having success or not. Because the first three, four or five years of our business, anyway, we were pioneers in the different countries. And we have a story that would curl your hair of the things that we went through that you don't have to go through. Sleeping on park benches, sleeping in a London train station where I froze my patoochies off. It was so cold in there and I had no money to get a bed. I got locked up in a, in a jail one night in Malaysia. You know, I won't tell you the full story there, but those things sort of happened in the early years and it was tough. And we persisted. It didn't matter because we had the goal in mind and we wanted the freedom, we wanted the lifestyle. And so we were willing to go through whatever it took. And we were disciplined. I mean, I did so many one-on-one -on -one presentations it was almost making me sick at the end, you know? It was like I was doing five to seven one-on-one -on -one presentations a day for years. And I just kept doing it. I became very good at it. But we persisted and it paid off. So. Persistence. Persistence. I think at the next success summit, we need to hear your whole story, if that's okay. Do we all agree on that? I mean, they'll be recognized as the four circle of, of, of excellence members, right? And so I think we get to hear your whole story, which is reason enough to come back for the next event. But the way I see this is you get a boost when you come to this event, right? And then it's the diligence that continues on. The diligence will create results, which create more excitement, right? And then it just elevates. So hopefully, if you enter the next event at this same level of excitement, right? And it just builds and builds and builds. Any other thoughts on that? What do you guys think? Diligence. I think that's. I think that's. Well, I think you're. I think. I think you leave these events and you're burning white hot and you're re-entering the Earth's atmosphere, and you just hope your heat shield stays together because you're going to lose a couple of tiles. <laughs> Our kids used to scramble and hide when Jerry and I would come back from convention because they knew it was just going to be like overload, and they were only like six and seven years old and they were already picking up on it. You know, they were young. But I think the key is you've got to realize that you are like here and the people you're going to be talking to may be somewhere like at this level. And if you hit them with the fire hose too quick, you're going to blow them right out of the room. And so you've got to figure out how to temper and time and position that message. Uh, and everybody's experienced that, I think. Everybody, you know, you were so pumped up about the whole thing. But uh, anyway, that's an awesome. Yeah, yeah. My kids are dressing me now, by the way. I'm, I, I'm that age. My kids lay my clothes out for me. My girls are buying my stuff. So I think he looks great. Well, it's yeah. Well, it's rental. Now. It's rented. It's going back after this event. So the way it works. Now, one of my last questions here is is for Dean. And one thing that I've always struggled with is leading people back. Right? Like we're here. And we know how awesome this is. We've been fed. How, Dean, in your experience, because you, you have a lot of the room here today, you've had a lot of the room in any room that you've ever been in, how do you lead people back? Just show the quality of the leadership. I think that uh, somehow you, you had to show that, and then the, the, the enthusiasm. One thing, one common thing that you see a lot, saw a lot of people on the stage, on the speaker from Diana this morning, and Mimi a, a few nights ago. I mean, I never see you that excited, Diana. 
So when you go back, you show that. Maybe you show it from some of the comment, you know, the post on Facebook or anyway, because there's one thing I remember, I, I remind myself all the time. Set yourself on fire with enthusiasm. And when the world gathers to watch you burn, recruit them. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's my slogan. I love it. Yeah. And then, of course, you, we, have, we have to do what we say, right? Your video and audio have to be synchronized. We say, Hold on, do you guys get that? That was awesome. Your video and off and audio have to be in sync. In sync, in sync right. And of course, you cannot stay home and tell people go to the, to the event. So that's why, how many people heard that your team members say, I, I, I cannot go because I don't have any team member come. Yeah. Right, we heard that a lot. So in fact, because nobody come, you have to come. So you have to plan ahead of time now, the next event is next year. How many people you will bring? And who do you talk to to bring in this event of because you will miss the boat. I think that's very important this year and next year with the new product, with the speed of the company you go right now. I think that we, you don't really want to be left out. Perfect. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Dean. Yep. I've definitely had, the most, power, most powerful event for me was that last event that I was by myself. Right, have you guys had that? Where you sit there and you're so upset, you're energizing, I'm never going to be here alone again. I would love to hear what your guys' experience with the rest of the panel thinks about that. Having your audio and your video synced up, yeah. doing the things that you're saying. Yeah. I think uh, this crowd's pretty young. You guys know Three Dog Night, the band? Raise your, raise your hand. Four people, okay. That's good. Yeah. Oh, anyway. <laughs> My first event was at the Yarrow Hotel back in November of 1989. And I was sitting there by myself, and right after that meeting, this Three Dog Night Satan song came on. One, you know, one is a wonderful number, it's the only number, that, two is only worse than one. And I'm thinking, that's what I just experienced. It was just me in this room by myself. You know, why don't you sing us a few bars now? Um, they got it. One is the loneliest number. Okay, that's it. Is that good? Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Gotta make the audition anyway. But no, that's that's so true that if, if you come here by yourself, that's all right. Just remember what it felt like and commit yourself to the next time it's not going to happen. And I wanted to say one thing about Sherry and Sean Brady. I've got the distinct benefit both emotionally, friendship, and financially, having them in my organization. And to have been a part of their life over the last 31 years has been unbelievable. These two people have paid the ultimate price, and now they're living the ultimate dream, and I think it's just fantastic. I want to thank both of you for everything you've done for me and my family. Thank you. I would love to hear your thoughts on, on leadership, Maria. How do you lead people back? Well, I think that the goal is the first step how many people like will bring to the next event, but the second part is that they understand that this is part of the system. But because when they feel that the system is only making the calls or selling products or, or recruiting, uh, and at the moment of the event, no money, problems, uh, many things that will stop them from coming. So, and I, I'm taking home an, uh, an advice that I took from Dean, about making the event more, or the, or the people coming more familiar. Because when the people put the excuse of having kids at home and not coming for that, uh, bring the kids. So I, I really thank you, Dean, for this idea. And I think that we need to understand that uh, we need to be here. Um, but definitely, it's part of our savings too. You earn money, whatever amount of money you earn with this business, save a part for yourself because you are not doing this uh, event just for the people that is coming with you. You are, do, you are investing in you and the most important person you need to invest to is you. So take, I, I used to say, people, love, show love to yourself. Because if you love yourself, you will duplicate that. And people will take themselves really seriously. 
So that's, that's my, my point. Events are not only that something I, I go and learn, it's, it's self-love. If coming Great. to events is self-love. Okay. Now, you touched on something here, that it is part of the system, right? And so many of us, I feel like this is a unique event because there's probably more new people at this event than ever before because we've had such a long gap between events, right? Where we have people coming across the ages, emeralds, this is their first event. Anyway, crazy. But, so many of you do not have, maybe you're just learning it now, that there's a system in place called System 7, right? With seven core habits and seven principles, right? A big piece of this moving wheel that has been proven to create success is events. Right? And so if you take that out, start taking this out, just like anything else, if you take out personal development, if you take out, you know, doing three meetings or, or, or right, you have all these, you start taking things out, the system doesn't work, right? And so uh, as far as the impact of system, how is it, how is important is it for many of these new leaders and new people to start systematizing the things that they do so that it duplicates? I don't know if the others are going to talk there, but... but um... When we began this 31 years ago, there was a very, very simple training called a 48-hour training. And it was where it had about six or seven different things that you did once you joined. And it really made the system, really made the, the uh, system seven actually. Uh, it's a little, you know, system seven's got a few more things in it. But when we were in Hawaii with the Team Elite trip, uh, like six, seven years ago, there was a Team Elite over there. And I'd been threatening to do this just to simplify the whole thing, but he brought out that 48-hour system that he had learned a long time ago. And from that point forward, I think, it, which is where System 7 came from, uh, you know, that, that, that systematical approach, the clear systematical approach to the business was there. Because honestly, a lot of people just got lost. They joined the business and they were not sure, you ever felt this way? You're sort of wondering what you're supposed to be doing every day? You know, what, what do I need to do every day in order to be successful and of course we've got the tools now to teach you but i'm sure you've had those feelings and you know uh, who was you i know you were sherry do you remember that trip where we page where we had that team elite from europe come up with that 48 hour training it's the same one we used to use 30 years ago and when that when we used that system back then the company grew from 40 million in sales to over 500 million in sales in that uh, 89 through 91 time frame and we had the, remember Mark? Remember that 48 hour trolley? We had? Business in a box. Right, business in a box, 48 yeah, hour training. It was really simple steps. So having that system and following that system is gonna bring you success obviously, but if you don't follow it, which a lot of people in here have ADD. Who has ADD in here? <laughs> I do, I don't mind telling you. And I'm a lot, I used to be all over the place, you know? And uh, luckily I got it under control and I have a lot of energy, I can do a lot of different things at the same time, but I, got, I learned to focus and follow that system and with the discipline and the persistence, okay, it helped us to create success, big success, you know, big, like that. Because big success, there's a big gap between little, medium and big success, right? Because you can do a, quite a bit by yourself right? Reaching, but then you can manage a little bit of a team, but for you to create a big organization, it, it goes beyond you, right? It needs to go way beyond anything you can do, which is the importance of the system. And so, no, everything you yeah. do in life is a system. And we've got a lot of women here in the audience that are pros at raising children. Everything is a system. In fact, Derek's grandmother, early on when we had a chance to visit with her at her place in Hawaii, we'd only been in the business about six months. I asked her, I said, what's the success? And she said, you need to treat your business like a family. And I know she's told you that. In terms of it's, it's raising children. You get them up, teach them some good principles, hopefully they're gonna start governing themselves, and then they're out of the house. And that's the duplication here. You find people, you teach them good principles, and let them go on to do the same thing. And it's, uh, yeah, that was great advice from Clara. It's building a family. And I hope that those of you who came here for the first time feel like you have found community and family here, right? And if not, come back. 
Come back and bring people and you'll see them cemented in and you'll just get more and more out of this. And so I'm so grateful for the panel. I'm grateful to call you all family. I won't throw you down a sand dune. That was just for Diana. But I'm so grateful for New Skin and for what I've learned from all of you this weekend and from these, these legacy leaders today. Let's give them a big standing ovation round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Thank you. 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 Thank you.